1668 says, For hope, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idol, idols, because the elites, they deal with blood sacrifices. Mainly these people that's going to be getting put to death and these, uh, by all this madness that they're going to bring. That blood is basically fueling their agenda to fulfill the bringing this uh, new world order. Because they deal with blood sacrifice, like satanic uh, sacrifices, which is basically when you do research about it, those people that get tortured and uh, body parts mutilated and uh, uh, the way they be dealing with these people sexually, it's all to generate and fuel that demonic presence, all right? And uh, basically to give power to them spirits that they want to provoke to uh, have them fulfill their agenda. So what's going to be happening in these concentration camps is basically uh, uh, human sacrifices, all right? And all that torturing is to help bring in that, that agenda that they want to bring in that new world order. Because you niggas is idle. You're not... Uh, you're not hastening the day. You being idle. You trying to save your life in this world. Well, the Lord gonna give you over to be put to death, and uh, because you don't want to uh, take heed to the word, you are gonna be offered unto idols, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden on the foot. Talking about taking that chip, you gonna be destroyed. Okay, for there shall be in every every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon them upon those that fear the Lord and they shall be like madmen sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in the fire that's right uh, 2nd Ezra 16 38 or 37 says behold the plagues draw nigh and are not slack when a woman as when a woman with child is in the ninth month bringing forth her son within two or three hours of her birth great pains come past her womb which pains when a child come forth they slack not a moment even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side and that's what you people gonna experience all them that's that's wicked and sinners and refuse to repent starting with our people you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans you, all you phony false ass leaders out there you're gonna get put to death you false prophets are gonna get put to death and you're gonna experience this in Esau and the rest of these nations okay oh my people hear my word make you ready make you ready uh, to the battle and in those days and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth he that selleth, let him be as though, be, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that will lose. That's right. He that occupieth merchandise as he that have no profit by it, and he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein, and he that soweth as if he should not reap, so also he that planteth the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. They that marry as they that shall get no children, and they that marry not as the widowers, widow, widowers, excuse me, and therefore they that labor, labor in vain, for strangers shall reap their fruits, and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives, for in captivity and famine shall they get children, and they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, and the more they deck their cities and their houses, their persons, excuse me, their possessions and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. That's right, Jeremiah 6 and 12. It says, And their houses shall be turned unto others, going into that, with, with their fields and wives together. Right? Because they're going to rape your women. Isaiah all right, 13 and 16. It says, Their children also shall be dashed to pieces, before their eyes, their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Okay, that's right. Zechariah 14 and 2. It's about to get real out here, man. Okay. And I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, 
because it's going to be a race war. That's another reason why they're going to bring in martial law. Okay? And the city shall be taken, and the houses raffled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth in the captivity, that's the concentration camps. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Okay? That's right. Jeremiah 6 and 12. And their houses shall be turned unto others, that's them troops, with their fields and their wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. And to tell you in Jeremiah 15 and 6, it says, Thus thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord, thou art gone backwards. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee, and destroy thee, I am weary with repentance. So when the Lord stretches his hand upon two-thirds of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, I, by means of famine, pestilence, uh, concentration camp, race wars, third world war, the chip, you're going to be destroyed, man. All right? That's right. Ezekiel 6 and 10. Alright, Ezekiel 6 and 10, it says, And they shall know that I am the Lord, and that I have said, excuse me, that I have not said in vain that I will do this evil unto them. That's right, because a lot of you guys think this is vain, man. Like, it's not going to happen. It's, it's going to happen, man. Thus saith the Lord God, Smite with the hand, thine hand, and stun with thy foot, and say, Alas, which is another way of saying woe, which also means destruction. For all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, you two-thirds of wickedness, for they shall fall by the sword, and by famine, and by the pestilence. He that is far off shall die of the pestilence, and he that is near shall fall by the sword. And he that remaineth and is besieged, i.e. martial law, uh, shall die by the famine. Thus will I accomplish my fury upon them. That's right. Jeremiah 15 and 2. It says, And it shall come to pass, if they shall say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Alright, because when the famine of the word kicks in, which we approaching that time even more, all right, especially in the hour of martial law, when you people try to search us out, the men of the Lord, alright, we're going to tell y'all to kick rocks, man, because you wasn't listening. Alright, those that knew better, and they did, they, they turned their ear from it, but now they seeking the Lord, a lot of them going to get uh, rejected and shitted on, man. Alright, and we're going to tell you to go forth. And it says, Whither shall we go forth? That's what you're going to say. Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, such as for death to death. That's right. And such as for the sword to the sword, and such as for the famine to the famine, and such as for the captivity to the captivity. Basically, we're going to tell you you're going to be destroyed, man. And whatever judgment the Lord bring upon you, you can't escape it, basically. Jeremiah 16 and, and uh, 3. It says, Thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place, and concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning their fathers that begot them in this land, they shall die of grievous deaths, and they shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine. And their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. That's right. So you niggas gonna die, man. Alright? And that's gonna be the judgment for two thirds of you. Okay? Re Revelations 12 and 11. Alright? It says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. That's speaking about the elect. Those that's going to be martyrs for Yahweh Shai and for the faith. Okay, it says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Alright, because our sins, alright, is, is washed and covered by the blood of Yahweh Shai, which he shed for the elect of Israel. Not all Israel, which is the remnant. I'll tell you that in Micah 7 and um, 18. Okay, all right, the Lord only pardoned the iniquity of the elect, the remnant of his inheritance, not all Israel. Okay, 
It says, and they overcame him. The him is Esau, the so-called white man. This new world order, the chip, all right, his system, all right, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, which is the prophecies, the scriptures. And they love not their lives unto death. And that's the that's what we at. We at that time where we don't care about our, our lives in this world, okay? Because this fashion of this world passes away. All right, we're looking forward to the kingdom, which is right at hand. So how much more should you your mind be towards the kingdom or heavenly things than to be on this earth, which is this kingdom is about to be destroyed? All right. So we 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 fear not our lives unto death. We love not our lives unto death. Basically, all right. Philippians one and twenty one. It says, for to me, to live is Yahweh Shai, and to die is gain. That's right. So to live is basically to preach the word, okay? And and that's how you feel, man. The only, that's, that's where your mind comes to. The only purpose that I'm still alive and haven't been touched with death, all right? Because we know we got people out there that want to put us to death, and we have been threatened teaching this word. All right, like the scriptures say, uh, like Paul and Barnabas did, they uh, uh, put their lives, you know, they, uh, what's the word? Let me get that. Was it Acts 15? We jeopardize our lives to teach the truth, man. You know? And you guys take it as a light thing. Like, this is just, we some clowns or something, man. All right? This is, um, yeah, here we go. This is um Acts chapter 15 verse 25. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Yahweh Mashiach. You know? So that's why it says back in Philippians 1 and 21. Well, I start at 20. It says, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Yahweh shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. That's right. So while we live, we preach this word to the glory of Yahweh Shah. And if that time our temptation come and that's part of where we be part of, you know, uh, Lord willing, I don't be part of that, that number, but if I am part of that number, that's some that should be tried even unto death, all right, in them prisons, in them camps, then, you know, let, let the Lord's will be done, but those that be martyrs for you, how shot, okay, they gonna magnify the Lord in their death, like it said, either by life or death in, in your body, so it says, for to me, to live is your house shot, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, which is teaching the word. Yet what shall I, what, yet what I shall choose, I will not, for I am in a strength between the two, having a desire to depart. Meaning Paul wanted to die. Okay, as many of us we get we get in that mode where we we want to see death, man. We'd rather be dead and back in the spirit world at peace, our souls at peace, than to be continuously vexed and troubled with all the abominations and wickedness in the society, all right? But we see the bigger picture that it, it's the Lord's will that we continue so that we may feed the flock, okay? To strengthen the elect, all right? He said, having a desire to depart and to be with Yahweh Shai, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Yahweh Shemashiach for me by my coming to you again. So even Paul had that understanding, and the brothers you know, that teach that's serious, we understand that. That's the only reason we haven't been touched yet with death or um, the Lord having answered that prayer. You know, sometimes you pray for that, you want to die, all right? But the Lord haven't answered that because he see fit that 
uh, you teach this word. It's for his glory. So.